Hi, I'm Denny again from Springfield Leather. Uh, last time on this series, we were uh, starting to make the pattern for a, a revolver, a Western type revolver, and uh, we got that all finished. So uh, now we're going to go through the process of actually making the holster. Uh, I guess the first thing that you need to be aware of when you're doing this is your pattern can be used either for a left or a right hand holster. So be aware of which side you're using. You know, you turn it one way and it's left hand, you turn it the other way and it's right hand. So uh, be aware of that. Uh, first thing I've got to do is uh, choose the leather that I'm gonna use and for a revolver, I like a, a good heavy holster, so I, I picked the heaviest piece of uh, tooling leather that we have, which is, a, a, I think, a 10 or 11 or an 11 to 12 ounce leather. And I'm going to make a, a rough out holster today, uh, uh, just single ply. You can line this holster if you want to. Uh, if I was doing one for myself, I probably would line it, but uh, that's a matter of personal preference. Uh, you're talking about twice as much leather and uh, quite a bit more labor when you line it. But we're going to go. We're going to simplify this and just do a single ply holster today, rough out. So, and I'm going to try and make a right hand holster. So I'm going to use this side of my pattern, and uh, I just I just got this piece of. Uh, leather here out of a, a box of stuff that I had. It's a pretty good looking piece, so that's the one I'm gonna use. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is trace this pattern on here, and I'm just gonna use a pencil. But uh, you wanna trace it as, as close as you can to what you've drawn. And uh, you know, I was when we made this pattern, I was talking about the fact that you can use this pattern for basically, basically any holster that you might come across. You might have to make some alterations, uh, like for barrel length. And if this is this is for a 357 uh, Magnum, uh, if you're making it for like a 44 Magnum or something like that, you, it might be a little beefier in the cylinder and. and uh, and handle area, so you might have to make your make your pattern a little bit wider to accommodate that. But uh, the basic shape is going to be the same on almost all of these. Okay, I've got my pattern drawn. Uh, all right. I'm using a round knife. You all can use any kind of knife that you're comfortable with. Uh, an X-Acto knife or a utility knife works very well. But I've used a round knife for a long time, and that's what I'm going to use here today.
All right, our, the biggest part of our pattern is cut out. Uh, if you'll remember, we did we have uh, our uh, holster loop retainer strap and our uh, welt still left to cut. Now, <clears throat> you can use the, the same leather that you use for your holster for your welt or for this strap. But for the welt, I generally like to use a little heavier piece. If you'll uh, notice in, the, in this holster itself, it's pretty thick there. And I used a little heavier piece of leather for that weld. So I'm going to do the same here. You don't have to do this, but I like to make it a little bit heavier. So See how close I got here. I believe that's going to work pretty well. All right, I'll put those two aside. And for this retainer strap, I like to use a little lighter piece of leather than I use for the uh, holster itself. But there again, you can use the same piece. You don't have to buy a whole bunch of different leather. Just I had this leather handy and it's a little lighter, so I'm going to use it. And I got all these tools here around the table and I might use them all and I might not use very many of them at all. The main thing that you'll probably need is a, a knife and something to draw your lines with. that strap cut. So now then, I won't do anything further with that uh, welt, but this strap and this, uh, the holster piece, I'm gonna get wet and case it a little bit. And when I do that, I just dip it in a bucket of water I'll do the same to this. I want to get it fairly wet, but I'm not going to just saturate this. If you get it too wet, it'll start to stretch a little bit on you. I want to avoid that. But this slicker, it compresses the leather, takes a little bit of the stretch out of it, and it flattens it out really nice. Most of you have uh, if you've used very much leather at all, you'll realize that uh, when you get it from the tannery, most of the time it'll have a lot of waves and lumps and bumps in it. And you can sure get rid of them when it's liquor. If you're gonna tool your leather, this really makes your tooling look good too because it does compress the leather. It, it uh, closes the pores on it. it. Takes a lot of the stretch out. Okay. Now, just for to see what it's going to look like, I'm going to fold this over. And if you'll uh, see here, I don't have a perfect fit. As long as I'm bigger with this piece, bigger than your, your finished outside piece, you're fine which I am. Okay. 
Now then, I guess the next step is I will scrape myself a line here, about the same width as my welt. I'm gonna put it on there. And that's where I'll glue my welt on this side. But first, before I forget it, this edge right here on your holster and this bottom edge is going to be really hard to bevel if you wait till after your holster is put together. So I'm going to bevel that and uh, rub that edge a little bit right now. But I'm going to use a number two edger on this and use any style of edger that you happen to have. This is a, I call this a fork edger. I like to use it on, on a heavy leather like this. I'm just going to edge this, this top part of the holster that folds over and this bottom part down here because the rest of it I can edge after it's put together. And I'm going to rub these edges a little bit because that gets really hard too. And I'm just going to use a little bit of water on a sponge, dampen this edge good. Then this is just glycerin saddle soap. Rub a little bit of that on there. A lot of different ways to, uh, to finish an edge, but this is pretty simple and it works really, really well. This piece of canvas, I'm just gonna take and rub that. The water and the friction is the main thing that's, that's doing the work here. That saddle soap will uh, make it kind of stick a little bit. Now I'm gonna take, do this top edge a little too. You don't need to use a lot of this saddle soap. Just get a little bit on the edge itself and use elbow grease. And I know you all can't feel this, but you can see what it's doing to this edge. I wish you could feel it because it makes just an almost perfect edge. As good as any machine you could ever use. But anyway, that's all there is to that. Now, I'm going to take in, uh, I need to rough this, this smooth side of this leather up a little bit and the smooth side of this weld. So I'm gonna have to step away for a minute because I forgot to bring a rougher. <laughs> All right, I'm back. I've got my rougher. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is put this welt on there so I know where to go to on the bottom here. I'm just going to make myself a mark at this bottom edge. Then I'll take and, and scratch this. Uh, I like to rough this, especially when the leather's wet because your cement's not gonna wanna stick too good to a piece of wet leather. This will help it, it'll give it something to adhere to. And I'll just, by the way, as far as cement, I'm just gonna use a contact cement. I'm gonna use Masters, it's, it's something we sell here at the store and it works really, really well. And I'm also gonna scratch the smooth side of this weld. You don't have to overdo this, just rough it up a little bit. Now I'm going to take this can of cement. This is a very sophisticated system I have here. It's a paintbrush and a coffee can. All right. Luckily, I did the right side of that. And 
And all you've got to do here is get this to stick together well enough to get it stitched up. But in the long run, if you get a good cement job on it, it'll keep the edges right here. It'll keep these edges from separating later on down the road. Later on down the road, if you don't get a good cement job and those separate, you won't be very satisfied with yourself. So anyway, then I'm going to fold this over and find out about where the top of this welt will be on this side. And I'm going to mark that. And I'll scratch it up a little bit. And when I was tell talking earlier about to lining this holster, if you line it, you'll have to give yourselves a, a little bit more room because that lining is going to take up some space. If you use a, a heavyweight liner, you'll have to give yourself quite a bit more room. Uh, I would say probably add uh, a quarter inch to each edge here on, on your holster for a, for a heavy lining. For a light lining, maybe an eighth of an inch or a three sixteenths will work. But it the, the leather itself is going to be pretty forgiving for you as far as the, the size of that for this type of holster. If you were building a molded like a like a conceal and carry type holster that you wanted to fit really snug and tight and have a lot of retention, you would probably want to fit it a little bit closer. But these old Western style holster, it's almost a one size fits all. All right, that's pretty much dry enough on this side. And the one thing that I want to be sure of is I don't want to be too far on the inside. I want I want this welt to at least stick out beyond this edge all the way around because this is our finished edge. So if you'll notice right here, I'm a little bit wide. Down here, I'm a little bit wide. Here, I'm just about right, but I'm I'm at least over all the way across. And uh, when I go to trim this off, you'll see why that's, that's necessary. That's also how you get a nice smooth looking edge on your holster is make sure everything covers well. Uh, this, I, I told you this is going to be a rough out holster and the holster part itself is going to be rough out. But when we bend this skirt back, you're going to see smooth out there. So when I put <clears throat> this retainer strap on, I'm going to use smooth out there. So some people would call this a half breed, but uh, I think it'll have a pretty nice look to it. Okay. Now. That's probably dry enough. And there again, when I stick this down, I want to make sure that I'm sticking out all the way, at, at least flush or, or beyond. Because if I'm a little bit short there, I'll never get it to look right. Okay, now that's stuck. Next step, I'm going to take a, an edge Groover, a stitch groover, and make myself a, a groove down here. I didn't let that dry very good, but that's all right. But I'm going to come in, uh, I'm going to make myself a pretty wide groove there. About 3 sixteenths is what I'm thinking. Start there, I'm going to end there. But I'm just going to cut a stitch groove in the top side of this. And I'm not getting real close to my edge. I'm in quite a ways. For one thing, I might sand quite a bit of this off. But for another thing, I sure don't want, if, 
I'm going to stitch this on a machine. And sometimes this, this holster will, will cock at an angle and the needle will come out closer to the edge on the bottom than you start on the top. So I want to make sure I leave enough room for that. Plus, I'm going to take a big edge. I'm going to use a number three or a number four edger on this edge when I finish it to round it off nice. And uh, I need plenty of room for that. Okay, now all I can do is let this dry. When it's dry, I'll stitch it. I don't want to stitch it while it's wet because the leather is actually swelled up a little bit in thickness. If I stitch it when it's wet and it dries and shrinks back up, my stitches will be a little bit loose. So I'm just gonna let it go for now. I'll see you next time.